Hello and welcome back. In this video, we are going to look at how to build a simple linear model using TensorFlow and also Keras. And what we'll do is we'll write some classes and we'll bring together all the information from the previous videos where we learned about tensors, variables, gradient tape, modules, layers, etc. So let's get started. The first thing we'll do is import libraries. So we need TensorFlow. So import TensorFlow as TF, and then we need for plotting matplotlib. So import matplotlib dot pyplot as plt, and again with this we'll get the colors. So colors is equal to plt dot rc params. And within this, we have axis dot prop underscore cycle. And then we have the by underscore key to get the dictionary. And then we get the value or the key color. So if we, if we just run this part, what this gives us, if we comment this out, what we get is this, which is uh, object if you look at the type of what this object is it's a cycler object so if you look at the type it's cycler and when we use the dot key or dot by underscore key what we are getting is our dictionary so when we run this we get a type dictionary and this is how the dictionary looks like where we have the color which is the key and so if, if we get the value if we need to get these values for the key color then we can simply put color in front of it in the square brackets and you get this list of colors so we'll use those colors as we go through this particular video now the entire example that we are going to look at today is directly from the docs so let me go ahead and add the link here so if you need to go back and look at it further the exact code is copy pasted from that particular document and i'm just going to walk through it explain it maybe type it and kind of uh, see how we can use the code that's there to create a simple linear model so the tips that to before we get started the code here are a couple of tips for solving any type of machine learning model uh, these are the highlights that we uh, we already know or we should be looking at is first thing we need to do is we need to obtain the data obtain training data and once we have the data we can define a model and then we need to define a loss function and once we have these done we can train the model so we can run through the training data training data and then calculate the loss and what loss is is it's a way to kind of quantify the difference between the actual value and the predicted value once we do uh, once we do that then we can calculate calculate gradients and uh, the reason for calculating gradients of for the loss is because we can then uh, update the parameters such as w and x uh, in this particular case that will bring the predicted values closer to the actual values and thus uh, reduce the difference between those and hence reduce loss and then uh, the next step course would be to evaluate the results with this in mind then let's see how our simple linear model equation would look like and it's going to be y is equal to or let's say f of x is equal to x star w plus b and here what we have is w is the we'll call it as weights and then the b we'll call this as the bias all right 
So now the very first step we are going to do is create the data. So we'll create the data for this example. And the data is going to be pretty simple. We'll declare some global variables uh, so that we'll fix the values of W and B. And those would be the actual values. So these are the actual values. Uh, actual values for the Y that will be create, that we will be predicting. So true is equal to 3.0 and true B is equal to 2.0. And we'll set the number of examples or the number of records to 201. Next, we'll create the values for X. So this usually we would say these are the features. X is equal to tf.lin space. And we'll get values from minus 2 to 2. And the number of values we need is same as num examples. And when we look at the X, it is going to be uh, these are the values between minus two and then we have the two right here and the data type is float 64 so what we can do is is convert this to float 32 so we can cast x to tf dot float 32 and so now when we look at the same x we have the data type as float 32 Additionally, we can go ahead and define a function to calculate our y. Function to calculate y. So let's call this d, d, d f, f of x. This takes in just our input value of x and it will return, return x times w so this is going to be true w plus true b okay so that's how the function would be defined and then we'll create some noise to a gaussian noise that will add to the values of y that will be created by this function so let's create some uh, gaussian noise and so noise is equal to tf dot random dot normal and here will the shape of that of course will be the same number of records as we have up above so example with a s examples and then we'll calculate the y the y is going to be equal to f of x so f of x will uh, get us the Calculate the values for y for each of the x's and then we add the noise to it. And so this is how our y values are going to look like. Again, those will be float 32 as we can see. Let's now plot these values and see how they look like on a scatter plot. So to plot these, we would simply say plt.plot x, y, and then within quotes we can put a dot and then plt.show so let's look at this so here's our plot that's the data and it's looking pretty good now let's look at how we can define the model by creating a class and this is going to be similar method that we have already seen in previous videos where we are going to create a class using tf.module so class my mod my model uh, and then we have tf dot module, and inside of this we have the init method tf init, and inside of this we have the keyword argument so self, and then star star keyword args, and then within this we have the super super dot underscore underscore init, and within this then we have the keyword args again star star keyword arguments and now what we can do is uh, declare the uh, create the variables for self and b sorry w and b so self dot w is equal to tf dot variable and let's set the value of this to five and then we have self dot b is equal to tf dot variable 
and let's set the value of this to 0, 0.0 with this now we are ready to create the method call so df underscore call underscore underscore self and we have an input value of x that comes in and then we return the calculated value of y which is going to be simply x times x times w so self w plus b and so we'll type self dot b in this case so that's our class my model and we are going to now use it to create the model so model is equal to my model open close parenthesis and we can look at the variables so we can print variables for this so print model dot variables and this will give us the variables that are in this model so why don't we do one thing we can name this so let's add a name here name w for this and then we can add a name is equal to b for this one so now when we run both of these cells again what we have is this model with a variable variables we have b and then the second variable we have is w and they are accordingly set to the values 0 and 5 that we have earlier in this particular class uh, we can also check to see if the model works correctly and to do that uh, let's so we'll call this verify that model works and we can use the assert statement assert model and we, if we pass in the value of 3.0 we sh if you look at the calculations we will have 3 times 5 which is from here so that is 15 plus 0 and so the output the return from this should be 15 and so we'll check that value if that value is equal to 15.0 and if it is we should get a true in the output so well i do not see anything here in the output so let's see if we can run that again okay so it looks like we are good there now let's define a loss function define a loss function and here what we'll create is df loss and this will take in the two input values target underscore y and predicted underscore y and then this will re return the square difference so we have uh, tf dot reduce underscore so essentially what we are doing is first we are getting the difference so target underscore y minus predicted underscore y so once we have that we can square this so tf dot square and once we have the squared value we get the mean value of this so for that we would simply type tf dot reduce mean reduce underscore mean in front of it so that's our uh, loss function next what we can do is plot the values for the x y and the predicted values and see what sort of plot we get plt dot plot x comma y and the in the first case what we'll do is we'll simply have a dot so this would be the original data and we'll label this as label is equal to uh, this would be just data original that we have then we'll plot the ground truth so plt dot plot and this would be x and this would directly be calculated from the equation so we just use the f of x there and we'll label this as the ground truth ground truth and finally we have the predicted value plt dot plot and this will again take x so then the predictions would be not from f of x but from model x and again here we would use the labels and label would be predictions now with all this setup we can print the legends legend and we can then print the we can type plt.show to plt.show and get the final plot printed and here is the plot we have oh well the reason why we have that work so beautifully is because i already ran the other model so let's run this again and hopefully this time okay so that's what i wanted to show so what we have is the original data which is the ground truth and then we have the original data is in blue then we have the orange color line that's the ground truth 
and we have the predicted line which is the green line you can see that that line is pretty off and the reason because reason is because uh, that's just gone through one iteration of the training and so the values of w are never updated if we print the loss so if it's a print a uh, small print and if we print the current loss and print the loss as loss we can calculate directly from y and using model of model x and then convert it to numpy and oh sorry that should be parenthesis instead of 90 there all right so when we run this we we should get the plot and we are missing a parenthesis again so uh, it should be working okay so here's what we have we have the loss that is 10 and that kind of tells us that our line is not yet best fit and as we'll go through this now we'll set up a training and you'll see that the loss comes down quite a bit to around one now let's define a training loop i'm going to create a text cell here df define a training loop and here what we are going to do is uh, perform specific tasks and let's see what those tasks are the first one is sending a batch of inputs through uh, so uh, let's put it in short so what we send is a batch of inputs and we send this through the model and thus we generate the outputs that's one thing and then then is calculating the loss so we calculate the loss and then use gradient tape use gradient tape to find gradients and this is to find the gradients and finally optimize the variables with those gradients so optimize uh, optimize variables this is using the gradients so let's look at how we can perform these tasks the very first thing that we'll do is we'll define a function train so define train and this will take in input arguments model x y and the learning rate and inside of this then we have with tf dot gradient tape and we have as p so let's call as tape and here we'll say current current underscore loss is equal to loss into y so so this is going we are calling the loss function loss y and then model y so we have the actual value and the uh, predicted value from model y then we calculate the gradients so dw db those are the gradients and this is tape dot gradient and this will use the current underscore loss and then we use the model dot w and model dot b like so and then we have model dot w dot assign underscore sub learning underscore rate and then we have star dw the model dot model dot b dot assign underscore sub learning underscore rate star and this is going to be db so that's a, that's the function that we'll use to train and so what this will do is take the model uh, then have the x and y uh, values and then the learning rate and we'll calculate the loss the gradient update the values for the gradients now let's look at the training so training and what we'll do here is create a model using my model that we have above class above 
and then uh, during this we'll collect data for history so we'll collect the weights weights and we have an empty list biases and we have an empty list then we have epochs and we have range of uh, let's say a range of 10 epochs the 10 iterations and now we are going to define the training loop training loop and inside of this we have will uh, create a report at each end of end of each epoch and the report will consist of the values for the loss uh, then parameters w and b so they will just return a string in this case of so string will have w is equal to inside of the curly braces so curly braces we have model dot w dot numpy so we have an array and we specify the uh, number of decimals 2.1.2 f and after this we have the second variable b that is equal to again another dictionary we can put in there and then finally we'll have loss that is going to be equal to another dictionary right there so for the b what we are going to type is model dot b dot numpy and again this can be 1.2 f and finally for the loss in this case we'll set this to loss and then 2.5 f so that's our that's our function which will give us the uh, string back for uh, to uh, so that we can see that in the output while the training is going on and then we have the train loop itself so training loop itself and so well so here we had we are already in that so why not just oh, delete that training underscore loop this takes in the model takes in y takes in x and then for epoch in epochs uh, here first thing we'll do is update the model with a single giant batch and the reason for that is the data set is very small so we can just input the entire data uh, at once so train and inside of this we have model x y and learning rate we can set it to 0.1 so let's put a 0.1 there and after this we have the weight so let's write this here so one update the model update the model and then we have right here uh track track variables uh variables and losses so we'll just put a word track there so in track again we are going to append the values so weights dot append model dot w dot numpy and then we have biases dot append model dot b dot numpy and then we have current underscore loss is equal to loss and then inside of this we have y and of course we need the that was the actual uh, ground truth and this is the going to be the predicted value so we are going to track that put that in the empty lists we created above and then we are going to print this string so this is going to be epoch and this is the epoch and 2d close the curly braces colon and then this will put the starting loss here and the rest of it would be printed by the report so print we can spell one two three couple of spaces one two three four and then report inside of this here model and current underscore loss okay so that's the okay that was something new there okay so that's the uh, training loop that we have created now let's do the training let's do some training let's do some training and here what we are going to do is create some more cells 
now for training we are going to uh, use current underscore loss is equal to loss and this will be y comma model what we are trying to do here is we are getting the current loss and printing it the very initial first loss uh, before we use the uh, report statement to print us the loss uh, from the history that's going to be printed so print f and this is the starting starting and we have print and inside of this we have one two three four one two three four and report model dot model and then we have comma current underscore loss okay and finally we have the training loop we call that function with the model x and y now here's what's happening before we run this let's uh, step through this and see what's happening so the very first thing is we calculate the loss printed so this is one st first step we'll see the loss printed out then we are calling the training underscore loop what that will do is uh, we'll go back up call this loop and this will run the for loop uh, it will run 10 times and in each each time it runs each iteration we are calling the train uh, we are calling the train and that's uh, the function up above what this will do is in the first iteration it will calculate the loss it will calculate the gradient update the values for w and b and then uh, update the values for w and b and so when we are back here we what we do is put them in our history and then print whatever those values or whatever loss we are reporting in the second iteration again we go back in here uh, again we call the train so it come we come back here and each time we are calculating this new gradient and when we are doing this we are also passing the model which is uh, what we have here as well and that model then is the model that we have defined above right here which is based on the class my model and so the updated w's that we get in each iteration will calculate a new value of in this equation that would be returned uh, and when it is returned uh, right here that difference between the uh, value returned by model and the actual value of y will diminish and thus the loss will diminish and so we should see that the current loss diminishes as the number of epochs increase so let's run this and see what we get so as you can see here we have the loss initial loss was 10 and uh, after uh, these many iterations 10 iterations the loss goes down to 1.0 and accordingly we see the value of w seems to change but after some time it changes little bit when it reaches 3 it changes by a few decimals and same thing with the b once it reaches 1 it changes uh, it, it has changed quite a bit but uh, not much change between these two right here let's now look at how we can plot the weights and the biases so we'll create a plot plt dot plot epochs on the x axis weights on the y axis and we'll have the labels the the weights and we'll set the color is equal to colors and we'll use the color that's at zero so this is a nice method where we can uh, have a control over what color we can assign to the line epochs and here we'll use the true value of w and we'll create a list which has the same length as the epochs has so we type the epochs here into length epochs and then uh, we'll set the style of this line to our, da our dashed line finally we have the label that is going to be the ground truth or uh, true weight and uh, then we have the color color would 
put the same color as we had above for that line and we'll copy the same two lines put them down below and use them for the biases so by biases is here and we'll of course label this as a bias and change the color to the one same thing here we have the value of true b that we would like to print and the label is going to be true bias and finally we change this color right here to one and with that then we i think we are ready to plot this uh, all we need to do is PL, add the legend line plt.legend and finally plt.show so the output that we'll see now is this pretty interesting and informative output where we have the trend that shows how the uh, value for the weights has decreased and it gradually approaches close to three and similar the value for the bias it uh, uh, increases and gradually approaches the value of two so this is what uh, kind of informs us how the values for the weights and biases change over time now let's look at how the uh, train models perform on the data that we have so we'll plot again have the scatter plot plt dot plot x and y uh, x sorry x comma y with the dot in there for printing and we we'll label this as our original data and then below that we have plt dot plot and we have x comma f of x and here then we have the label this label is going to be the ground truth ground truth t r u t h and then we have the predictions so plt dot plot and for predictions of course we are going to use the model x model f of uh, model x and then we have a label for this so let's add the label is equal to this is the predictions now we'll end this with the legend and plt dot show plt dot legend and then we have plt dot show all right so let's print this and see what output where we get so as you can see oh, okay so there's i think uh, i need to go back and run these lines again because uh, earlier i went gap back up and run had run the earlier cell and that's why that line was not fitting okay so now we are good what we have uh, is the same set of data points as we had earlier and the orange line that was there and now as you can see the fitted line is pretty close to the ground truth which is the orange line the green line is very close to the orange line and so that's how the uh, up, uh, the process of updating the weights and biases helped us reduce the loss and bring the uh, predictions closer to reality we, we can also print the loss of this model and so if we print uh, current loss and we can uh, we can get the current loss of course from the loss function so loss and we have the model x so the in earlier value we have y and then you have the value from the model x and we can convert this to an numpy array and so in the output again we should see the same plot and the value of loss so here the current loss is one as opposed to the earlier case where we had this line which was not a good fit line and where we saw that the current loss at that time was 10. so that's how we can uh, proceed through updating the weights and biases to arrive at the final answer now let's take a small uh, detour from Keras, uh, detour from TensorFlow, uh, Core TensorFlow, and look at how we could get the same solution in Keras. So let's look at Keras now. And the setup is similar as we have seen in previous class where we created modules for that. So in this case, we'll create a My Model Keras. So we have the same class, My Model, and we'll add Keras in front of it. And instead of tf.module now, now we are going to use tf.keras.model and inside of this again we have the same init class so init 
and here we have the same self and we have the same keyword arguments star star k w a r g s and we also have the same super dot in it and here we have uh, keyword arguments keyword args and so that that's that now we again need to define w and b so let's define that self dot w is equal to tf dot variable and assign it a value of 5.0 and likewise we have self dot b and we'll assign it a value of zero so that was five and now we'll assign a value of zero so like so so with this then we have defined these two things next we need to define the call and because we are inside of we are using keras model now we instead of writing this underscore underscore call we are simply going to type call and then we have self comma x colon and inside of this we'll perform the calculation and return the value of the y so self this is going to be x times self dot w plus self dot b and so that's how we have our model ready now in addition to this we uh, we now create a keras model so keras underscore model is equal to my model keras and open close parenthesis of course we can use the same training loop that we had earlier so uh, we let's use that so we have a model ready and now we are going to uh, reuse the training loop with keras model keras model and here we'll use training underscore loop and keras underscore uh, underscore model comma x comma y now uh, just to recap if we go back up and look at the training model uh, the class the sorry the uh, training loop the function that we had created is this one it takes in model x and y so all we are doing is replacing the model and this will call the train and the train is right up here which will calculate the gradients for it. all right so now with this we can run this and uh, we have we can see the loss as the initial loss was four it came down to three and sorry the weight was four came down to three and the loss was six and it comes down to one now we can also use the checkpoint built in that is built in keras so we could also save the model uh, like so so we can use a, a checkpoint uh, inside of this so keras underscore model dot save underscore weights and we can call this my underscore checkpoint and that will save the file and that will save the weights so if you go back here i think uh this is there are several files i may have run earlier so that's how the checkpoint file would be saved uh, that has the weights in it and now let's look at uh, another way in which we can uh, look at uh, functionalities in keras so for this we can, we would need to use compile so that's again like another way so let's say another way another way to work in keras and here what we do is keras underscore model again we can use the same my model keras and what we can do now is we can uh, perform a com we can compile we can use model dot compile so keras underscore model dot compile and inside of this we can specify a certain uh, 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 argument so here we can specify a run eagerly e a g e r ly is equal to false and then we can specify optimizer is equal to uh, tf dot keras dot optimizers dot sgd so stochastic gradient descent 
and we set the learning underscore rate is equal to 0 0.1 and in finally we can use loss is equal to tf dot eras dot passes dot mean underscore squared underscore underscore error so so this is a short and sweet way we can write a concise code using keras and with this if we run this i think this there's an error there uh, because we forgot to put a comma now okay so that did run and now we can perform the fit the so print uh, x dot shape zero so we'll look at the shape of x and then we can use keras underscore model dot fit so if you've uh, looked at uh, scikit learn so it's similar way we can use the keras at least in terms of fit epox is equal to 10 and bats underscore size is equal to 1000 so when we run this what we see here in the output is we have the epoch so one out of 10 and last one is 10 out of 10 uh, we see the time it took to run that step and finally we see the loss the starting loss is 10 as we have been seeing earlier and the final loss at the end of the training is one so at this step the uh, predictions should be fairly close to the actual values that are for the uh, that we have for the ground truth so that's it then that's how we can create a simple linear model using tensorflow from scratch and we also looked at implementations using pure keras or a combination of tensorflow and keras and we i hope this more this particular video can consolidates your knowledge from all of the previous videos in this series starting from the gradients uh, what are gradients what are variables what are constants what are modules layers etc and if you have any questions comments or suggestions please do let me know in the comment section below i hope to see you all in this uh, oncoming videos in this series please like share and subscribe it means a lot to me thank you